In this video, we're going to look at how you can use the parallel period, same period last year, and date add DAX functions in Power BI. We're going to go through each one of them step by step. And we're also going to look at some of the slight differences in how they work. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So if you're familiar with DAX, most likely you've used one of these functions already, uh, which is usually used in combination with the calculate function. So for example, when you're comparing or calculating a variation of data, maybe you want to compare your current month sales versus last year or last month. And depending on the results that you want, you have the option to use one of these three functions. And it's a good idea to know how each one of them differs from one another as their behavior has some slight differences. So first I want to show you this report that I built uh, for today. It has essentially just two tables. One is the sales table, which has a list of uh, some fictional sales for a number of years. So it just has some random numbers of sales for all the dates. We also have a calendar table, which just has the two columns, one for the date, which is what we use to link with the sales table and a year month column, which is um, a grouping or grouping our dates into months. So here in the model view, you'll see that the calendar table is related to the sales table through its dates uh, column. And in the sales table, I just created a measure called total sales, which is just aggregating the sales column, which we will use for calculations later. So if I bring in the date column from the calendar table and bring in the total sales, you will see for each of the dates that we have in our calendar table, we have the corresponding total sales for each one. So from here, let's say what we want to do is for each row, we want to get what the value is last year. And the easiest way to do this is by using the same period last year DAX function. So let's see what it says um, and what it does in the documentation. So same period last year simply says it returns a table that contains a column of dates shifted one year back in time from the dates in the specified dates column in the current context. So you'll see from here that same period last year will take only one argument, which is the list of dates as a column. And what it does is it returns a single column table of date values. So let's go back to our report and let's try to create a new measure here. Period last year. And because the same period last year function returns a table, we'll use it as a filter context with our calculate function. So we'll start by typing out the calculate and then we'll bring in the expression that we want to evaluate first, which is we've already pre-created. We want the total sales. And then in the filter context, we will type same period last year. And then here we will just simply give it the date column from our calendar table. You hit enter and drag it onto the table here. You'll notice that the values in uh, 1st of January 2019 is empty because that date is actually the earliest date of sales that we have on record, which means that same period last year in that row context means it's trying to look for sales that we had in the 1st of January 2018, which we don't have, which is why it's empty. So what you'll notice is that if I scroll down to January of 2020, though, you will see that it will start to show some values, which is uh, 3832 is the total sales for the 1st of January 2019. If we go up, you will see it matches with that date. So the current context is on dates, and it's not so easy to 
show or, or demonstrate how the same period last year looks like from here. So we can change the context of it to just giving us the months instead. So if I remove the dates here, and here you can see a lot easier the total sales for 2019, 9881, and then you have January 2020, which corresponds to that total sales same period last year. And you notice that as we change the context from dates to months, the same period last year also matched its values accordingly. And this is one of the key points of same period last year. The row context changes what the period means. So for example, in this table, because we have a row grouping of months, same period last year will give us the value same month last year. If we had a date like we had before, it will try to get the same day last year. So as you can tell, the period is dynamic based on the context itself, but the interval stays the same. It always only looks at previous year. But what if we wanted to get, let's say, last month or two years ago? We have two options available to us, the date add and the parallel period DAX function. So these two are going to look very similar, so we're going to cover them together. But they have some slight differences that you might not know in case you decide to use one or the other. So let's have a look at what it says on the documentation here. So it says that parallel period returns a table that contains a column of dates that represent a period parallel to the dates in the specified dates column in the current context, with the dates shifted a number of intervals either forward in time or back in time. And you'll notice that both the syntax, it takes three parameters, which is the list of dates, number of intervals, and the type of interval. And this syntax, as well as the return value, looks very similar, almost the same as the date add function. So the main difference between these two functions and the same period last year is that you can change the period you're looking at. So for example, if you wanted to look at last month, you can change that uh, period to months instead. So let's have a go at writing this one. So let's start by creating another measure. We'll name this one parallel period. And again, because parallel period returns a table, we will use it as a filter context in our calculate measure. So total sales, parallel periods, it asks now for a column of dates, which we already have in the calendar. Number of intervals, we said that we wanted to look at the previous month. So we will do minus one, and then the interval would be month. Close that value. Drag that measure into our table here. And here you can see now that for each row, parallel period will always return the value of what it was last month. So 90881, 80656, which is what we expect. And to achieve the same result as the same period last year, we can modify the parallel period slightly, which is simply just changing this from minus one to minus 12, which is basically looking at the same period like 12 months ago. So you'll see that both the same period last year and parallel period now returns the exact same values. So with the parallel period and date add, you can change how far you look to the previous period or even to the future period. You also have control in terms of the intervals. So you can change it to looking into days, months, quarters, or years. Unlike same period last year though, because you define the intervals explicitly, in the function, row context affects them a little bit differently. So for example, let's try to change the context of this table uh, from months, and we'll put it back into dates. So obviously now we don't have any parallel period for 2019. But if I scroll down to 2020, you will see where the difference lies. So same period last year, as we explained, changes the context based on the raw context. So in this case, it's checking what it was back in the 1st of January 2020. Parallel period, on the other hand, looks at the full month parallel period for January 2019. So instead of looking at the day 
like the 1st of January 2019, like same period last year does. It looks at the whole month's total. And it's probably easier if I drag in the year month here and I just drag in the sales so you can see what I mean. So 90881 is the total sales that have happened in January 2019, 12 months ago from the 1st of January 2020. And the reason why it's staying like that is because we defined that for parallel period, it should evaluate the whole period of that month, 12 months ago. So just to remind you how we wrote that uh, DAX, we're saying that give me total sales for the parallel period for the current date in context 12 months ago. So it doesn't matter how you change the row context here, date, quarter, or year, it will always look at a month interval. So now that we know the difference between the same period last year and parallel period, now let's compare parallel period and date add because they have same parameters and same results. And it's very difficult to distinguish what is the difference between these two. So let's have a look at these two together. So I'm going to remove same period last year here. I'm going to create another measure. We'll name this one date add. Calculate. We will just copy the same syntax as the parallel period, date add date calendar date number of intervals minus 12 month so now if we change this context to a year month like this bring in date add you will see that the parallel period and date add how they're written and what they return almost looks almost exactly the same so the difference comes when there is partial dates involved so what am I talking about? So let's put in the dates here. Let's put it in a slicer. And let's try to change the dates here. So let's say, uh, let's choose a date in the middle of the month. So 14th of May 2020. So you'll notice that for the, mo for the most part, they will have the same values, except on May 2020. So you can see in parallel period, we have a significantly bigger value as opposed to date add. So what's happening there? So basically what's currently happening is that the May in our table starts from the 14th to the 31st of May 2020, which means although in the table it sort of shows that we have the full month of May's worth of data. It's actually a partial month because of the filter. So the filter starts from the 14th instead of the first. So parallel period will still give you the total value for that month. So to prove that that is exactly what's happening, I can show it to you in an Excel file, which is simply an export of the uh, the, the data that we have in Power BI. So if we look at May 2019 sales, the sum for that whole month, the whole month is 72,493, which if we look at the parallel period here, is giving us the full month's worth of total sales last period. Date add, however, because we are looking at partial dates, takes that into account and only calculates the total sales for the 14th onwards within that month. So 39,236 is the total number of sales from the 14th of May 2019, which is 39,236 right here. So essentially what it means is that if you want to compare the same periods and you want to take into account partial dates, you should think about using date add instead of parallel period. Parallel period always returns the full results of the period, regardless of any partial dates that may be involved. So for example, in this case, we saw that even though we have a partial date that started on the 14th of May, parallel period will still show the full value of the May 2019, regardless of the filter applied to the table itself. So if you need to get the full results of a period without worrying about partial dates, you should use parallel period.
And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with the differences between these three DAX functions. Thanks for watching, as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.